Welcome back. My next guest is my partner at Family Practice Associates, Dr. Diana Hayslip, and she's going to help us with the flu. Now, I just heard on the news right before I came in here, we've already started to see some real cases of the flu. So, I mean, what is the flu? What makes you think, okay, I got this. I need to see a doctor about it. Well, flu typically has fairly severe symptoms of coughing, body aches, headache. Um, sometimes you can get some stomach upset as well with the flu. Well, when you say flu, how do I know I've got the flu or I've got bronchitis or I've got a cold or I've just got plain allergies? It can be hard to tell because some of the symptoms are very similar. Flu typically hits very quickly. You start feeling sick and then you feel bad by the end of the day. Where a cold is typically um, more slower in your symptoms. Maybe start with a sore throat and then a runny nose and a cough. Uh, bronchitis generally is more chest stuff, wheezing, those kind of symptoms. Now, so if you, if you think you have the flu, you go to the doctor. Yeah, you should go to the doctor. Um, one thing that we can do at the office is we can test and see if you really do have the flu or not. We have a nasal swab that is rapid. We can know the results within 15 minutes. If we do think you have the flu, there is some medication that we can prescribe for the flu. What's the medicine? I mean, does it cure the flu? It doesn't cure the flu, and you know, you can get over the flu without medication, but the Tamiflu if you, is the one we typically prescribe. If you start it within two days of your symptoms, usually it does reduce the course of the illness. It also present, prevents some of the complications of the flu. Um, the flu can sometimes cause pneumonia and make you actually be very sick, so it can help with that. It can be dangerous, especially in the elderly. Right, especially in the elderly or also in infants. Now. If you don't want to get the flu, what do you do? How do you avoid it? Well, sure, hand washing is very important. Also, uh, you know, obviously we like the vaccine. Vaccine is for six months and older. Uh, we recommend that everybody six months and older get the vaccine if they're able um, to help prevent the spread of the flu. And another thing that's really important is if you do have the flu, you really need to stay home. You do not need to be working or be at the store. You need to stay home to help prevent the spread of the flu. Now, we used to have, give the, the flu mist, and the kids liked that because it wasn't a needle, it wasn't a shop. That's no longer available? That's right. We don't recommend the flu mist anymore. All right. Now, if, you're at, if you've got the flu and you either go to the doctor and on Tamiflu or you're at home and you want to treat your symptoms, what are some things that are safe to do? Well, for fever and body aches, Tylenol and Advil are typically safe to do as long as you don't have a medical reason why you can't take those. Over-the-counter cough medicines are also, you know, generally safe to use as well to help with those symptoms. You know, it, it's, it's hard, in, in kids, it's hard to find things that are pediatric approved to give now. That's right. Pretty much it's going to be mostly just treating the, the fever and the body aches. For cough, there's really not any recommended you know, medications for young children. Now you, you talk about cough. So if it's not due to the flu, you mentioned a little bit about pneumonia. Pneumonia is treated different, and then if you've got a really bad cough, we've also seen a little bit of surgence of uh, pertussis or whooping cough. Right. Well, pneumonia can be also very similar to the flu because with pneumonia, you also get fever and cough. Typically with pneumonia, it, you know, it takes longer for your illness to develop. We talked about the flu. You get your symptoms very quickly. With pneumonia, you know, you're coughing up a lot of mucus. It can be rust colored or um, a more pussy colored. Uh, whooping cough you had talked about, that also presents with a really bad cough. Um, that would be something probably seeing the doctor would be good for, as well as if you think you have pneumonia. And that's particularly, uh, I guess pneumonia is worse for older people, but pertussis is pretty tough on kids. Right. It's, it's very dangerous for infants. So that's why if you are going to be around infants, it's good to know if you've been vaccinated against pertussis. And the fact that there's a new, not a new vaccine, right. but it's a, it's a booster that you should get? Right. There's a vaccine called Boostrix, um, and it has pertussis as well as tetanus in it. All right, so we've talked pretty much about the respiratory illnesses. What else are we seeing as people go back to school and you start seeing infectious diseases? Right. One of the things it seems like I see a lot is the gastroenteritis. Right, right, and that's also caused by a virus, kind of like the flu is a virus. Um, typically that's nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. You can also get fever and body aches as well with that. We've also seen you know, quite a few strep cases as kids have come back to school. Strep throat, you really need to treat with an antibiotic right. because there's some problems with it. Otherwise, you just treat symptoms. That's right. And again, at the doctor's office, we can do a test to help determine whether it's strep or not and if it needs an antibiotic. Well, that's great information and hopefully help you deal with some of the infectious disease this fall. And now here